Look, you can do 10,000 crunches a day, starve yourself on celery sticks and water, or run until your feet bleed and you will not lose that menopause belly fat. Why? Because you're fighting the wrong enemy during the most hormonally chaotic time of your life. Most people think belly fat is just fat, just stored energy, right? Wrong. What if I told you that the fat you can pinch, the jiggly stuff under your skin, is actually completely harmless? The real problem is something you can't pinch. It's a hidden parasitic tissue buried deep inside your torso, strangling your liver, choking your pancreas, destroying your heart. It's called visceral fat. And here's the scary part. You can be skinny everywhere else, arms, legs, face, and still have a dangerous amount of this fat packed inside you during menopause. But I have good news. While visceral fat is the most dangerous fat in your body, especially when menopause hormones are in free fall, it's also the easiest to burn off if you know the biological combination code to unlock it. I'm going to show you a specific Japanese protocol involving a certain pigment in vegetables, a specific compound in tea, and a 75% rule for movement that slashed visceral fat by 48% in just two months. So put down the weights, stop the crunches, and hear me out. To understand how to get rid of this fat, you have to understand what it is and why menopause makes it explode. Visceral fat is not like the fat on your arm. The fat on your arm is subcutaneous. It's passive storage. It just sits there like a savings account. Visceral fat is biologically active. It acts more like a gland than fat. It spits out inflammatory chemicals, messes with your hormones, and drives insulin resistance. Think of visceral fat like a parasite. It latches onto your vital organs, your liver, your stomach, your pancreas, and it feeds off your inflammation. But here's where menopause makes everything worse. When estrogen drops during menopause, you lose your protective barrier against visceral fat accumulation. Estrogen used to tell your body to store fat in safer places, like your hips and thighs. Without it, fat goes straight to your belly, wrapping around your organs like a boa constrictor. And it gets worse. Menopause triggers a cortisol spike. Your body is stressed from the hormone chaos, sleep gets worse, and cortisol levels stay elevated. High cortisol is like pouring gasoline on the visceral fat fire. It tells your body to store more belly fat while simultaneously breaking down muscle. It's a perfect storm for fat storage right when you're trying to lose it. There's also a condition called TOFI, thin outside, fat inside. You can look skinny everywhere else and still have dangerous amounts of visceral fat strangling your organs. This is arguably more dangerous than being obese because you don't see the warning signs. Your genes fit fine, but inside, your liver is drowning in fat. So how do you know if you have it? Here's the symptom check. Stand up and poke your stomach. If your belly is soft, squishy, jiggly, that's mostly subcutaneous fat. That's vanity fat. But if your belly sticks out like you swallowed a basketball and it feels hard, solid, firm, protruding, that is visceral fat. That firmness is the pressure of the fat pushing out against your abdominal wall from the inside. That's your liver screaming for help during menopause. So how do we kill the parasite when your hormones are working against you? We need a three-step attack. We need to cut off its food supply, block its enzymes, and then burn it out. And we need to do it in a way that works with menopause, not against it. To kill the parasite during menopause, we need to understand what feeds it when your hormones are in free fall. Step one involves your diet, but I'm not gonna tell you to just eat vegetables. That's boring and it's not specific enough for menopause fat. We need to target the root cause of visceral fat during this hormonal transition. What causes it? It's usually an excess of energy that leads to oxidative stress and menopause amplifies this like crazy. Imagine your cells are like a car engine. When an engine runs too hot for too long, it starts to rust. That rust is oxidative stress. Visceral fat loves that rust. It thrives on it. And here's the problem. 
Hormone fluctuations during menopause create more free radicals, more cellular damage, more rust. Your body is literally rusting from the inside out and visceral fat is feeding on it like a parasite. To kill the fat, we need to scrape off the rust. The most powerful rust remover in the natural world comes from a specific family of compounds called carotenoids. Carotenoids are the pigments that give plants their color. It's the orange in a carrot, the red in a tomato, the deep green in spinach. These aren't just pretty colors, they're fat-fighting weapons. I found a fascinating double-blind study out of Japan. They took a group of people and simply increased their intake of carotenoid-rich vegetables, specifically carrots and cabbage, for just eight weeks. Here's what happened. The carotenoids acted like a shield. They neutralized the free radicals, those unstable molecules damaging your cells, and they actually flipped a genetic switch. They turned on the genes that burn fat and turned off the genes that store fat. The result was a significant reduction in visceral fat just by adding color to the diet. But here's why this matters even more during menopause. When estrogen drops, your body loses one of its natural antioxidant defenses. Estrogen used to help protect your cells from oxidative damage. Without it, you need to replace that protection, and carotenoids do exactly that. They support hormone balance while simultaneously attacking visceral fat at the cellular level. Science shows that carotenoids don't just remove rust, they also reduce inflammation, which is critical during menopause when cortisol is already elevated. Less inflammation means less signal for your body to store belly fat. It's a double attack on the fat parasite. So here's your protocol. You need to eat the rainbow, but not the Skittles version. I'm talking about sweet potatoes, bell peppers, spinach, squash, and carrots. If the food is beige, bread, pasta, crackers, it's feeding the parasite and spiking insulin during a time when your body is already insulin resistant from menopause. If the food is vibrant orange, red, or green, it's killing the fat. It's that simple. This isn't about calorie restriction, which backfires during menopause because it spikes cortisol even higher. This is about targeted fat-fighting nutrition. You're not starving yourself, you're feeding your body the exact compounds it needs to neutralize the oxidative stress that's driving visceral fat storage during hormonal chaos. The rule is simple. Beige foods feed fat. Vibrant colors kill fat. Every meal should have at least one deeply colored vegetable. That's your shield against the menopause fat parasite. Now that we've built the shield against visceral fat, Let's talk about the liquid key that unlocks your fat cells during menopause. Now let's talk about what you're drinking. There's a specific drink that acts like a key for your fat cells during menopause. You've probably heard that green tea burns fat. You might think, oh, that's just a myth. It's not a myth, but you have to understand why it works so you don't mess it up when your hormones are already working against you. Green tea is loaded with a polyphenol called catechins. The specific one we care about is EGCG. Here's the mechanism, and this is really cool. Think of your fat cells as having a front door. Usually that door is locked tight, especially during menopause when your metabolism slows down. Catechins help pick the lock. They stimulate your nervous system to boost fat oxidation, burning. But they do something else that's critical for menopausal women. They also inhibit an enzyme called lipase. Lipase is the enzyme that breaks down dietary fat so your body can absorb it. When you drink green tea rich in catechins, you're basically putting a bouncer at the door of your gut saying, no, we aren't letting all this fat in. This is huge during menopause because your body is already primed to store more fat due to the estrogen drop and cortisol spike. There was a randomized trial, double-blind, placebo-controlled, that showed drinking catechin-enriched green tea for 12 weeks reduced visceral fat significantly. But here's what makes this even more powerful for menopause. Green tea doesn't just burn fat, it also helps regulate cortisol levels. Remember, elevated cortisol during menopause is one of the main drivers of belly fat storage. By helping to balance cortisol, green tea attacks the fat problem from two angles. And there's a synergy here that's perfect for the menopausal metabolism slowdown. The caffeine in the tea works with the catechins to accelerate the effect. It's a one-two punch. 
The caffeine revs the engine that menopause tried to shut down. The catechins unlock the fuel tank that hormone changes locked up. But here's the warning, and this is where people get it wrong. You cannot just buy the sugary bottled green tea from the gas station. That is sugar water with the green tea label. It will make your liver worse and feed the visceral fat parasite you're trying to kill. You want matcha or sencha tea. Why? Because you're consuming the whole leaf, which means you get a massive dose of catechins compared to a regular tea bag. Here's your protocol. Swap your second coffee for a matcha green tea. Don't add sugar that defeats the entire purpose and spikes insulin when menopause has already made you more insulin resistant. You can add a little lemon juice to help absorption, but keep it clean. This is your liquid key. It inhibits the lipase enzyme, unlocks fat cells, and helps regulate the cortisol chaos that's driving belly fat storage during menopause. This builds the foundation, but here's where most menopausal women get it wrong with exercise. Now we get to the most important part, movement. And this is where I need you to forget everything you think you know about exercise and fat loss during menopause. Fasting is great for total weight loss. If you stop eating, you will lose weight. But studies show that while fasting shrinks the whole body, exercise is the laser-guided missile for visceral fat, especially when menopause has made that belly fat bulletproof. But what kind of exercise do you need? Do you need to run marathons? No. In fact, that might raise your cortisol even higher and make menopause belly fat worse. Do you need to be a power lifter? Not necessarily. The answer is way more specific than that, and it's backed by Japanese research that will blow your mind. I want to tell you about a study that changed how I think about fat loss during hormonal transitions. It was a meta-analysis involving 117 different studies on exercise and fat during menopause. And then there was a specific study that looked at a very precise protocol. In this study, participants cycled for 45 minutes, just twice weekly. That's it, two sessions. But, and this is the big but, they did it at a specific intensity. They rode at 75% of their VO2 peak. After two months, guess what happened? They didn't lose much weight on the scale. And this is why you should throw your scale in the trash during menopause. The scale didn't move much because hormone fluctuations cause water retention and muscle changes. But their visceral fat dropped by 48%, almost half of their deadly belly fat gone in two months with two workouts a week. They also improved their insulin sensitivity by 41%, that's essentially reversing the pre-diabetes risk that menopause creates when cortisol and insulin resistance spike together. This is critical to understand. The scale is lying to you during menopause. Your body composition is changing even when the number doesn't budge. Visceral fat is melting off while you're potentially building or maintaining muscle, which weighs more than fat. The scale can't tell the difference between dangerous organ-strangling fat and healthy, metabolically active muscle. So what is 75% intensity? You don't need a fancy lab coat or an oxygen mask to figure this out during menopause. You just need the talk test. If you're walking and you can sing a song perfectly, that's too easy. That's not 75% and is not burning visceral fat. If you're sprinting and you feel like you're going to vomit and you can't speak a single word, that's too hard. That's anaerobic and it's spiking cortisol, which is the last thing you need when menopause has already elevated it. You want the sweet spot right in the middle, the talk test rule. You're at the right intensity when you can speak in full sentences, but you sound a little winded. You should sound like you just walked up a few flights of stairs. You can talk, but you'd rather not. That is the zone. That is where the magic happens for visceral fat during menopause. Here's what makes this even better. Recent research in the British Journal of Sports Medicine found that exercise has a dose-dependent response for visceral fat. What does that mean? It means the more you do, the more fat you lose. There was no upper limit found. If you exercise a little, you lose a little visceral fat. If you exercise a lot, you lose a lot. It doesn't plateau the way dieting does during menopause, when your metabolism is already struggling. So here's your protocol. Three to four sessions weekly, 45 minutes each. Cycling, rowing, steep walking, it doesn't matter, just use the talk test. 
If you aren't slightly out of breath, you aren't burning the belly fat. And remember, consistency beats intensity during menopause. The best exercise isn't the one that burns the most calories on paper, it's the one you'll actually do three months from now when menopause fatigue hits. If you hate running, don't run. Go for a ruck walk with a backpack or go swimming. Just get your heart rate up to that 75% sweet spot. Let's bring this all together into a plan you can start tomorrow, even with menopause symptoms. Let's put this all together into a plan you can actually use starting tomorrow, even when menopause is throwing everything at you. Step one is the scavenger hunt. Look at your plate. If it's brown, put it down. Add one serving of a deeply colored vegetable to every meal. Carrots, spinach, bell peppers. This is your shield against the oxidative stress that's feeding visceral fat during hormonal chaos. Step two is the liquid key. Swap your second coffee for a matcha green tea. Don't add sugar, you're trying to unlock fat cells, not feed them. You can add a little lemon juice to help absorption, but keep it clean. This inhibits the lipase enzyme and helps regulate the cortisol spike that menopause creates. Step three is the 75% solution. Whether you cycle, row, or walk up a steep hill, it doesn't matter. Just use the talk test. If you aren't slightly out of breath, you are burning the belly fat that hormone changes have locked onto your organs. Now here's the biggest trap almost every menopausal woman falls into, and I need you to hear this. When women want to lose belly fat during menopause, their instinct is to starve themselves. They cut calories to 500 a day. They do OMAD one meal a day improperly. They fast for days without prep, thinking extreme restriction will force the fat off. Here's the problem. Data shows that calorie restriction hits a wall during menopause. There's a limit to how much dieting helps before your metabolism, which is already slowing down from hormone changes, slows down even more to protect you. Your body thinks it's starving, so it holds onto the fat even tighter. And worse, severe calorie restriction during menopause spikes cortisol even higher. You're already dealing with elevated cortisol from the hormonal transition. When you add starvation on top of that, you're creating a metabolic disaster. Remember, cortisol is the fat storage hormone. High cortisol tells your body to store visceral fat around your organs while simultaneously breaking down muscle. Extreme dieting during menopause doesn't just fail to burn fat, it actively makes the problem worse by triggering the exact hormonal response that drives belly fat accumulation. Exercise is different. Studies show exercise has a dose-dependent response for visceral fat with no upper limit. The more you do, the more fat you lose. It doesn't plateau the way dieting does during menopause when your metabolism is already struggling. So the strategy is not to starve yourself. You want to eat enough nutrient-dense food, the carotenoids, the proteins, to fuel your body and support hormone balance, and then use movement to create the deficit and target the visceral fat specifically. This protocol works with menopause, not against it. You're not fighting your body, you're giving it what it needs to heal. The colorful vegetables neutralize the oxidative stress. The green tea unlocks the fat cells and regulates cortisol. The 75% rule burns the visceral fat without spiking stress hormones higher. Visceral fat is dangerous. It's the driver of almost every chronic disease we face, and menopause makes it worse. But your body is resilient and wants to heal during this transition. It just needs you to give it the right signal. Stop starving it, start fueling it with the right pigments, the right compounds, and start moving it at the right pace. Consistency beats intensity during menopause. The best exercise isn't the one that burns the most calories on paper, it's the one you'll actually do three months from now when fatigue and hormone fluctuations make everything harder. Choose movement you enjoy. Eat foods that fight fat, not deprive your body. And remember, the scale is lying to you. Focus on how you feel, how your clothes fit, and trust the process.